today's episode, we're going to do another tank update. This time we're going back to Mike Paletta's and we're going to look at that 75 gallon soft coil tank. I'm Russ Kickle and welcome to another episode of American Reef. It's been probably a year and a half since you guys have seen an update on that 75 gallon soft coral tank of Mike's. Um, the last time you saw it, I believe what happened was he changed his uh, reef bright or added reef bright lights to the tank because the AI kind of didn't make his corals pop the way he wanted to. Uh, with that being said, since then, he's actually replaced the LEDs with T5s. Now, this episode is not going to be on the T5 replacement, but just more on the tank and the filtration, so you can kind of see what's happening there. And We're going to follow this video up with another one as it relates to lighting on that tank, why he switched to the T5s, and maybe some of the things that he likes over these T5s as opposed to the, uh, the LEDs on this tank. Again, it's a soft coral tank, and uh, you know, again, rather than talk about it, let's go see Mike and let's see uh, that tank and see what's new in it. Okay, sir, so what are we looking at now? We're looking at, as I said, I've tried to pick up the, the nicest soft corals I could find in terms of color, uh, kind of being a little bit different. Obviously, there's only so many, most of which are green or beige or light pink. But I've tried to improve the interest of them because, one, a lot of people like them because they're moving around. But, two, I've also tried to add unique or uh, interesting fish in here such as the, my favorite fish of all time, which I've mentioned before, is the peppermint hogfish that's in here. But I've also since added a uh, bonded pair of flame angel fish. And when I say bonded, not mated, because obviously they're not spawning in here that I can tell, but they hang out with each other without killing one another, which is unlike what most flame angels do, because most of them that we bring in are males, because the males are larger, redder, and much more colorful than the females, which are smaller and more orange. So having that pair in here, uh, I got them primarily because I have a picture of a flame angel in my room and they sort of went in uh, together. So the next thing obviously I need to find is a nice mystery wrasse to put in here to, to complement. And so people can say, oh, you have the uh, flame angels and the uh, mystery wrasse and you have them in your tank and you have pictures of them. So yeah, I am a simple guy. Uh, in addition to them, there's four uh, Akarai cardinal fish. There were seven but these four killed off the other three because they were smaller. Uh, they are quote unquote a schooling fish, but really what they do is they have their own little spot in the tank. They guard it by about one foot and they sort of stay in those spots. Uh, there's also a Desjardini tang, which I put in. I know the tang police are not happy when you put a tang in a uh, small 75 gallon tank, but he was necessary because I was having a massive outbreak of Valonia. So I'm uh, much more inclined to use natural measures to control pests and the Desjardini tang is the best fish I have ever found for controlling uh, that Valonia algae or pretty much any other algae. So since he's been in there, I did a scrubbing and haven't had to do one since because in the last four months he's pretty much taken out every morsel of Valonia within the tank. In addition to that, there's a trio of Bartlett's Anthias. There's a pair of uh, yellow Watchman gobies. Uh, there's a Lineatus ras. There's a flame hawkfish. Yeah, there's a, a pair of yellow watchman gobies. There's one showing it's her or himself there. Uh, they have a pistol shrimp that they hang out with, and they live underneath those mushroom anemones. Uh, believe it or not, those mushroom anemones were in my SPS tank, and they started from a single mushroom anemone about two years ago, and now they've grown into several hundred, uh, both here and again downstairs. So as they cover up a rock, I take the rock out of the SPS tank, or, because SPS corals are not real big fans of mushroom anemones and bring them back up here and eventually I'm going to have this whole tank filled with purple mushroom anemones the way it looks. 
Uh, there's also some interesting file fish in here. Uh, there's a bonded pair of Aptasia eating file fish. Again, they were put in to control the Aptasia and the Magano anemones, which were starting to dominate this tank. And since they've been in the tank, they've pretty much uh, removed every single morsel of a uh, Magano or an Aptasia anemone in here. And there's also something interesting. There's a flame file fish in here. So since these file fish have done so well, I'm going to take the big plunge and I'm going to go for a pair of orange spotted file fish next. One, it'll be interesting to see if they all get along, because right now these three file fish don't bother one another. But it'll also be interesting, since those have survived, to see if uh, what are primarily uh, obligate coral polyp feeder will survive as well. Uh, there's also a pair of orange skunk clowns that live in the anemones. There are now, I think, six anemones in here. Those have all been splits from the original mother anemone, where the clownfish are now in the back of the tank. So these anemones just keep popping up. They're lime green. I mean, they're a really nice bubble anemone. And then there are also uh, a, a green spotted mandarin fish, some ruby red dragonettes, some uh, red scooter blennies, and two or three blennies of different uh, ilks in here. Uh, starry blennies, a ember blenny, and a uh, fuscus blenny. Yeah, the flame hawk is in the very back of the tank on the far right right now. Fugium with a skimmer, uh, quote unquote the Paletta method. Uh, there's also a UV sterilizer because when I put the Des Jardini in, as is the, the problem with most tanks, even though he was quarantined, you know, he still developed ick when he was shaken up. So as a result, there's a UV sterilizer on it that does it in slow so said This is a very low tech tank, uh, just pumps, and there's a fan for pulling in the summertime. With those new eliminator single circuit plugs, I can flick a switch and turn it on in a heartbeat. Uh, so everything pretty much is simple to turn on and off. So basically, it's the same pump as you started off with. Yep. Same filter, meaning ecosystem refugium. Right. But what you've changed is the skimmer. Right. And this skimmer is much more efficient than the old skimmer. And which skimmer was this one? I think it is the 150. As I said, this is my upstairs tank. This is the tank I see every morning when I have breakfast. These are sort of my pet fish because uh, because of the peppermint hog, this is my, that's my all-time favorite fish now. It's an awesome fish. Which everyone says, what's your favorite fish? I never had one until I got one of these, but it's so rare. And as I said, everyone that sees this tank notices that fish. I have fish in every other tank I've ever had. No one ever really noticed one specific fish that as much as they have this one. Yeah. So there's a reason why it's so rare and so expensive. And I, you know, I can't really justify the cost mm -hmm. other than I... Saw Rufus Kimura at Magna, how he catches them and how deep the water is, right. and doing a helium rebreather and all of the things. So seeing what that poor gentleman goes through to make my life enjoyable to look at this fish, it, it's it's well worth the money. So if you really have a ton of money for your dad, that's what you can get him for Christmas. <laughs> but for somebody that has everything, I can guarantee he doesn't have one of those. So, But in a soft coral tank, it's nice, but if you put it in a typical reef tank with shrimp and crabs and stuff, there will no longer be any shrimp or crabs or snails. He's very adept at popping the snails off the glass and then sucking them out of the shells. Yeah. Uh, even the cleaner shrimp are, are not safe with him. Yeah. So he, he is a hogfish. He does eat virtually everything. <laughs> but as I said, he's my favorite fish. And seeing him, his color going across every day makes me comfortable that the tank's doing well. Heck yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for sharing, Mike. Yeah.